and just talking about introduction to silo theorems the silo theorems and lagrange theorem are the most important research in the study of finite group theory we know that the fundamental theorem for finitely generated abelian groups gives us a complete information about all the finite abelian group but the study of finite non abelian group is much more difficult so that there is a significance of silo theorems the silo theorem gives some important information about them actually the positive converse of lagrange theorem leads to silo theorems so what is lagrange theorem the lagrange theorem is says that let h be a subgroup of a finite group g then order of h divides order of g and next what is the positive converse of lagrange theorem which says that let g be a group of order m and n divides m then g need not have a subgroup of order n for example considering the alternating group a for n z to 1 both the groups are of order 2 and 6 divides 2 in the case of a4 there does not exist a subgroup of order 6 but in the case of z12 there exists a subgroup of order 6 so there is a question when such subgroups are exist the first silo theorem gives the existence of some uh, existence of such subgroups more precisely the existence of subgroups of prime power order so what is first silo theorem which says that let g be a finite group and o of g is equal to p power n into m where n greater than or equal to 1 and p does not divides m then g containing a subgroup of order p power i where 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to n and any subgroup h of g of order p power i is a normal subgroup of of a subgroup of order p power i plus 1 where 1 less than or equal to i strictly less than n this does not imply a subgroup of order p power i is normal in g this is because of normality does not satisfy transitive property more precisely consider a finite group let order of g is equal to 2 cube into 3 square into 5 cube into 7 then first silo theorem says that g has a g has at least a subgroup of each of the following orders 2 4 8 3 and 9 5 25 125 and 7 that is the possible existence of subgroups of order 6 10 15 30 8 other divisors of order of g which has two or more distinct prime factors because certain subgroups are guaranteed by silo theorems such as subgroups are called as silo p subgroups so next we want to know that what is silo p subgroups let g be a finite group and p be a prime p divides o of g and p power k divides o of g and p power k plus 1 does not divides o of g then any subgroup of order p power k is called as silo p subgroup that is the maximal p groups are called as silo p subgroups again taking an example Uh, or let order of g is equal to 2 cube into 7 square then by first silo theorem we can say that g has a silo 2 subgroup of order 8 this is because 2 cube divides order of g and 2 raised to 4 does not divides order of g and also the silo 7 subgroup is of order 49 so in conclusion the first of the fundamental theorem for finitely generated abelian group and the silo theorem gives as all right sorry shows that the converse of lagrange theorem is true for all finite abelian group and all finite groups of prime power order that is the first silo theorem is the sufficient condition for the existence of subgroups so there is a question what is the necessary condition for the existence of subgroups that hence the second silo theorem the second silo theorem says that let p1 and p2 be the sub So two silo p subgroups of a finite group g then p1 and p2 are the conjugate subgroups of g that is any two silo p subgroups of a finite group which is conjugate to each other we clearly we know that the second silo theorem gives as a complete information about the the relationship between the silo p subgroups and the second silo theorem gives a gives the relationship between two silo theorems so how to calculate the number of such silo p subgroups 
So, hence the third silo theorem. The third silo theorem we says that let G be a finite group and P divides order of G. Then the number of silo P subgroups is concurrent to one model of P and that divides order of G. So, the third silo theorem gives the number of silo P subgroups. So, it is a very interesting area. There are so many applications for silo.